Um, I'm going to go through um, a brief presentation about specify and try and focus mainly on the sorts of things that we've been talking about now and some of the things that I showcased yesterday in our demonstration session. Mainly to do with um, getting your data into specify really easily, uh, handling images, and how to get your data back out again and share it with other people. Um, so I'm going to go through a couple of slides and just um, give you a brief indication of how specify handles some of that stuff. But let's start right at the beginning. Um, what is specify? So essentially specify is, a, is an efficient computerization and management tool that allows you to um, manage your biological collections information and then mobilize that stuff and get it out on the internet so that people can actually see it. It consists of a highly customizable form-based interface that allows you to um, essentially set your view of the database by deciding which fields you want to see, which ones you don't want to see, moving them around, etc. Um, some powerful querying tools so that you can um, get into your database and find out the material out and search for what it is that you're trying to find. And then a robust report designer that allows you to design labels, long forms, gift forms, all of those sorts of things, all of the printed output that you want to try and get out for your collection. The aims of the project are to advance biological collections, computing, uh, communication and collaboration, not only through the software that we provide, but also through the services that we provide. We don't only provide the service the software but we also provide a bunch of services for free um, in terms of um, converting your database across to specify, creating forms for you, creating reports for you, all of those kinds of things. Now I say free, the, 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 the software is downloadable to our website for free. We like to call it prepaid. It's essentially prepaid by NSF. We get NSF money to develop specify and then we can hand it off to the end user for free. And that's the web address down at the bottom there. There's a whole bunch of resources on that web page. Um, that will help you find out about how to download, how to download it and how to use it. I did talk to you about how to go about deciding what database system to use. I'm obviously extremely biased, and so I'm not going to go into that in terribly much detail, but there are obviously numerous other systems out there. Uh, KEEMU, Cost Perfect, Index, Contact, Ansys, Symbiota, etc. etc. Um, a lot of those have limitations or cost prohibitations for small or medium-sized museums. Um, some of these uh, packages cost a lot of money, not only uh, to purchase, but also to maintain. Um, the nice thing about Specify is that it's free. Um, Specify is also extremely flexible and customizable. You can go in and you can customize your views and customize the way that, the way that you want the package to work for you. You can dumb it down as much as you want to if you're working in a really small collection with very few fields, or you can really expand it out and be a, a, as, as expensive as you want with the data model and use as many of those tables as you want for your data. Specify covers all disciplines. The star at the end there is because we obviously do not cover things like living collections, zoos and aquaria, and we do not at present cover um, anthropology or archaeology collections either. But we do cover all the natural history disciplines. Um, Specify is designed to be open source, so it's community driven. Um, you can go and you can download the code, you can fiddle around with it, you can add your own plugins, you can do all of those kinds of things if you have an understanding of the source code and you want to play with it. Specify also has a wealth of features and some of them I'll go through during the presentation today. And then the other consideration is obviously supported on the entity. Um, Specify, as you'll see in my next slide, has been funded consistently by the NSF since 1987. And we are hoping that that is not going to change. There are no, no guarantees that that is not going to change. But we like to believe that because of the number of collections that we support, and the wealth of features that Specify has, that that's not going to happen anytime soon. So as I mentioned, um, we've had about 15 major releases in 25 years. Specify started out as a DOS-based package called Muse, which some people still use, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> and it's gone through numerous iterations since then. It went through a very brief phase being called Oz, um, and then went through Specify 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and now has been incarnated into Specify 6 which is developed in Java, which is an op which is, um, opened up all sorts of doors for us in terms of allowing it to operate on a Mac, a PC, or Linux. Uh, as I said, we've been supported by the NSF consistently since 1987. The package is designed to be database agnostic, meaning that it can work with any backend. There's no reason why it can't work with Postgres or Oracle um, or MSSQL. We ship with MySQL to try and keep it as open source as possible, and there are no triggers built into the system that will not allow it to operate with other uh, backends. As I said, the whole system is open source. If that code means anything to you, it's under a FOSS GPL2 license, which 
session is open for anybody to play around with. We have a staff of about eight people across the road upstairs. Uh, some of you saw their headquarters yesterday. Um, I am part of one of those people. Um, and they attend to all of the programming, the development, the conversions, um, and all of the user issues. Specify has an expansive and, and, and expanded and augmented data model <coughs> on the Specify Firebird. And we usually don't like showing this to people who just scared to put Jesus out there. Um, and that's what the demo model looks like. It's about 120, 120 tables and about 2,400 fields. But there is no one single collection that is using probably more than 25% of that data model. Um, because of all the esoteric ways in which different divisions handle their data and the, and the kinds of things that they need to have available, there are lots of those tables that become redundant for particular disciplines. And so there are lots of those tables that, that very few people are using. So as I mentioned, we have representation of all of the natural history disciplines in Gene Specify, all the way from entomology and botany through to all of the paleo disciplines. We have about 135 <coughs> collections in, 25, in 29 countries uh, using Specify, 160 US institutions in 48 states, and we estimate about 10 million specimens cataloged in Specify across all of those collections. Those numbers are obviously increasing exponentially all the time. We are getting new people coming into Specify. We are getting new specimens being cataloged into Specify all the time. So those numbers are, are ever changing. So Specify has been designed as this collection management platform. We design the nuts and bolts of the system, and then either we or other people design these pluggable components that will plug in and be able to do these weird and funky things that people want to be able to do with their data. <coughs> Designed as a true multi-collection discipline capable system in terms of you can have multiple collections, multiple disciplines, multiple divisions all in a single database and they can share pieces of information across them. We have a number of third party applications that are built in to specify Nelson's geolocate engine is built in as I showcased to some people yesterday and also Google Earth so that you can visualize your specimens on a map and then share that information with other people as a KML file. We also have web services and online providers that you can take advantage of and specify you can create these little buttons on your forms that will then link out to an external authority and bring in information into your collection. Um, like IT Fish Base is one that really fishes use it very often. And then there's the life of the project which has been developed here at Kenya as well, which is um, trying to come up with these um, distribution models um, for species. We're also involved in a number of um, strategic partnerships, um, the filtered push program. Yeah, through Harvard and now Canada. Um, a botanical OCR imaging project that was originally at, at uh, Michigan, um, um, and now the, the PI that is now in, in Spain. We're also looking at um, partnerships with more bank and barcodes in the black um, for DNA barcodes and images to be able to not only lodge images with, uh, with more bank and barcode in the black from within Specify um, through an automated tool, but also to be able to scavenge images and barcodes out of barcode in the black we also have um, a, a new strategic partnership that is not on there um, with um, some folks in Sweden to design two web versions of Specify. Um, one is a web search engine and one is a thin client, which I'll talk about a little later. Specify is a stage frequent release program, um, so we are fixing bugs, adding new features to the program all the time. When you log into Specify, it automatically goes to our server to look and see if there's a new version available. If there is a new version, you can download it and you will be up to date all, all the time. So this is your initial view into Specify. Um, this is the opening screen with the data entry form um, open. And so you can manipulate all of these data entry forms and add fields, remove fields, move them around, resize them, recapture them, um, change the way that they're presented to you so that you can customize the entire experience specifically for your collection, for your particular discipline, but also for your particular dis um, scenario that you have um, in your museum. There's obviously a whole bunch of features built into these, these forms, pick lists, um, and all those kinds of things that facilitate data entry and facilitate trying to keep your data clean um, in terms of making sure that you have a pick list of constrained terms when you're entering taxonomy, those kinds of things. Um, so you go in and type in the first couple of letters of a species name and it gives you a drop down list of available entries that are in the taxonomic tree that you can then choose from um, and use those to then um, pick whatever it is that you want to uh, that you want to use. The synonymy that is driven through the trees is also displayed on the forms so that you can keep track of old names and new names, um, etc. If the name isn't in the tree, it'll take you directly to the, to the uh, data entry form for taxonomy so that you can run into that new item into the tree um, and build up the taxonomic tree as you're entering specimens into your collection. Same thing is true for localities. Um, you can 
type in the first couple of letters of the field name um, or a field number, and it'll give you a list of all the available options that are already in your system. You can pick one of those from the list and reuse it if, you, if, if your particular discipline does it that way. Um, I know in the very collections, they don't really use their collecting events. They have a one-to-one -one relationship between collecting events and collection objects. Um, but in our scenario, we use them all, reuse them all the time. And all of your locality information is stored in three separate tables. You have a collecting event that's connected to a locality that's then connected to a geography. And they're all connected in one-to-many relationships so that you can reuse them over and over again. Within a particular county, you can have multiple locations connected, collected in that county. And then each of those locations can be collected over and over again, either by the same person or different people on different dates. So you can reuse all of that information over, again, over and over again, rather than having to re-enter it each time. So this is a collecting event form, where you have a field number, a date, and a bunch of collectors who collected that, that material, which is then linked to a locality form, where you have a locality string, a back along, and some additional um, information about that form. You'll notice that on the form there's a geolocate button, so that you can interact with Nelson's geolocate engine directly from the locality form, and georeference your material on the fly as you can it into the database. Uh, preparations uh, work in much the same way. You have a one-to-many relationship between preparations and collection objects so that you can enter as many preparations as you want to for the, for the one object. Um, in fishes, we traditionally have a lot of material that is then broken up into ethanol specimens, green stain specimens, and skeletal specimens or tissues. Um, and so you can put as many of those into the system as you want. You also notice that all, all of the major forms have an attachment function. All of the forms have an attachment function that allow you to attach anything that you can save on your computer to any of those particular forms, be it a, an image, be it a PDF, be it a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet, whatever it is. You can attach those to that particular object and then view them from the specimen. So there's a bunch of data that is stored in specifying trees, in authority trees. You have taxonomic information, geography information, and then storage information, exactly where all of your specimens are stored within your institution. So the building, the room, the shelf, the box, the vial, the rack, etc. You can put all of that information into the tree and keep track of it and then link it to your specimens. The taxonomic tree has a bunch of uh, levels built into it and you can decide what you want those levels to be for your particular scenario. Um, and then there's all sorts of things that you can do within these trees to keep that information um, uh, valid. There's three drag and drop functionalities that you can use within the trees to either move, merge, or synonymize things. So you can take one object and move it from one parent to another. Somebody's put a genus in the wrong family. You can just take it and move it to the correct family and it will correct all the objects that have been connected to that particular object. You can also merge two things together. If somebody's put in the correct spelling and the incorrect spelling for a name, you can drag the incorrect spelling onto the correct spelling and merge the two together. Get rid of the incorrect spelling and move all of the collection objects from the incorrect one to 